Welcome back. In this video, we're going to study more vector operations. We're going to introduce scalar multiplication and addition, and we'll also take a look at properties of addition, of vector addition and scalar multiplication. In our first objective here is to take a look at the product of a vector v and a scalar k is a vector that is the absolute value of k times as long as v. And if k is positive, then kv has the same direction as v. And if k is negative, then k times v has the opposite, the opposite direction of v. And we can tell the direction by the arrows, OK? So super important, we take a look at the, the arrows. So v, you can see here, 1 half of v is going in the same direction, OK? And its vector has half the magnitude where 2v has double the magnitude of v. Now the opposite of v has the same magnitude, but it's heading in the opposite direction. So take, a, take close note at your arrowheads, because that shows you the direction of your vectors. To add two vectors, u and v, geometrically, first position them without changing their lengths or directions so that the initial point of the second vector coincides with the first, with the terminal point of the first vector. So you're kind of stacking your vectors on top of each other. So we're taking u, u and going to its end point, and, or its terminal point, and then we're taking v, and v is going to start where u ends and proceed in its direction and its magnitude. So the sum of u plus v is the vector form by joining the initial point of the first vector, so where we started with u, and to the terminal point of the second vector in the second vector. So kind of that concept of you know the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. So we'll go from this starting point of u to the ending point of v and create that, that new vector of u plus v. And this technique is also called the paral parallelogram law for vector addition because the vector u plus v is the result of a parallelogram having adjacent sides u and v. So u and u make two parallel sides and v and v, and then our diagonal is u plus v. So uh, this is kind of the parallel to v here, and the par I got that backwards. This is the parallel of u here, and this is the parallel of v. Right out of our textbook, the definitions of vector addition and scalar multiplication are listed here. As you can see, to add two vectors, we just take the first coordinate of one vector and add it to the first coordinate of the second vector, and then we take the second coordinate of the first vector and add it to the second quarter of the second vector. And there's your, your vector addition. And scalar, similar to distribution, we take our scalar and we multiply it, or our scale and multiply it by the first coordinate, then we multiply it by the second coordinate. The opposite of a vector, as you would think, is kind of changing its direction or distributing or scaling by a negative 1. So the opposite of vector v is just taking negative 1 times v or distributing a negative 1 to the first coordinate and the second coordinate. And then the difference is the vector that's being subtracted we will now subtract the first coordinate and subtract the second coordinate of the second vector from the first vector. And we'll do some samples with that in just a moment. So to represent u minus v geometrically, you can use that directed line segments with the same initial, the same initial point. The difference u minus v is the vector from the terminal point of v to the terminal point of u. So if we have vector u and v kind of in light gray here, 
then u minus v goes from the terminal point of v to the terminal point of u. So that's u minus v. So let's take a look at some samples. We've got a couple vectors here in our component form. V is negative 2, 5, and W is 3, 4. Find each of the following vectors. 2V means essentially we're going to take V and double it. We're going to make it twice as long or twice the magnitude. So all we have to do is essentially scale each of those. So we're multiplying each of those by 2, and our new vector becomes negative 4, 10. So if we started at the origin, for v, and it has a negative 2, 5, and we would double it, it would go all the way to negative 4, 10. So there's our sketch. In b, we're going to subtract w minus v. So when we do that, let's take a look. We'll have to drag these points with us. So the component form of w is 3, 4 and v, the component form, is negative 2, 5. So w minus v will become 3 minus a minus 2, and 4 minus 5. So we end up at the point 5, negative 1. So our new location is at 5, negative 1. So w was at 3, 4, so its original vector ends at that particular point. And then we knew that our subtraction was going to end at 5, negative 1. So proceeding from there to our new point, that is our minus v. So w minus v is the new component from the start of w to this terminal point 5, negative 1, the result of our subtraction. So this is the vector w minus v. In our third sample, we want to find the sum of v and 2w. So our component vector v at a first coordinate of negative 2 and a second coordinate of 5. And then 2w, well, we need to scale that. So we'll just copy this one down, our v, and then plus our new component vector of 6, 8. And then adding those together, we get our new component vector of 4, 13. So v plus 2w. So our v from the origin was negative 2, 5. And then 2w took us all the way to 4, 13. So we plot that particular point, And now we know that that's 2w. And then v plus 2w is from our origin, or from the start of v to our new point, 4, 13. So that's our new vector, v plus 2w. And in objective 3, we've got some properties of vector addition and scalar multiplication. Number 1, u plus v equals v plus u. It appears that vector addition is commutative. And in property 2, we also have essentially an an associative property of addition, where if we group u plus v plus w, that's going to give us the same result as u plus v plus w. So our order stayed the same, but we regrouped, so that's our associative property. The additive identity, the identity for addition is zero. You add nothing to the vector, you'll get your same vector. Uh, our property of opposites, or the additive inverse here in four, also holds our associative property for multiplication holds. 
in step five, that's also associative. And our distributive property also holds, or our scalar here in six. And we have got the similar thing here in seven. In six, we had a the vector and the sum of the scalars. And here we have the scalar and the sum of the vectors, but those still hold, so. And then in eight, essentially we have our multiplicative property of zero and our identity for addition. That's the identity for multiplication. For getting the magnitude in nine, our scalar times our magnitude equals essentially the absolute value of that scalar times our magnitude. So there are your properties and some samples for vector addition and scalar multiplication. And we'll get some more practice with this when I see you in class.